A famous Chinese saying in depicting the art of combat states, the hands are like swinging doors, the feet are the real weapons. Capable of generating tremendous force, the legs are the most powerful natural weapons a human being possesses for the defense of his life. Perhaps few men have known this better than Korean Taekwondo master Hwang Jung Lee. The six primary areas of the foot that may be utilized as weapons, the ball of the foot is perhaps the most well known. Here we see it used in frontal position against the solar plexus. With the foot cocked perpendicular to the lower leg, it may also be used to strike horizontally. The second weapon is the instep. At the point of contact, the toes are held extended and there is tension felt in the Achilles tendon. The back of the heel is the third weapon. To be used effectively, the foot must be held in this position. The fourth weapon is the inside ankle. While striking, tension should be felt just above the foot's arch. The fifth weapon is the outside ankle, the hardened bone of which is used in striking an opponent. The sixth and final weapon is the back knife edge of the foot, which follows the natural line of support extending down the leg. The straight foot position is formed by outstretching the feet while bending back the toes at the same time. The side foot position, however, is fixed with the feet resting perpendicular to the lower leg, toes curled back and the arches turned inward. Muscles and tendons, when subjected to excess tensile strain, lose their elastic restoring force, much like a rubber band that once overstretched either snaps or loses its resiliency. By swinging the leg up, held straight, muscles are stretched dynamically as opposed to the static elongation produced by other methods. 
Stretching in an upright position creates a better sense of balance, although for this side stretch, beginners are advised to hold onto a chair. Sustaining the hip back slightly, foot held in the side position allows the leg to swing higher. A state of equilibrium between all the antagonistic muscles which align our skeletal structure creates the balance essential to proper kicking. To develop muscular equilibrium, relax, elevate the knee and kick out straight, suspending the foot briefly upon full extension. Spring or bound is the correct origin of all kicking motion. The greater downward force of the toes against a lesser and opposite force in the ground produces an upward acceleration, the speed of which is determined by elastic strength in the arch of the foot. Without spring, kicks lose both speed and power. Skipping rope will help to develop spring. Circularity not only plays an important role in the motions of the universe, whether it be of suns, moons, planets, or subatomic particles, it also forms the essence of a well-executed kick. Curved motion, unlike linear or straight line motion, which involves sharp changes in direction, requires the least amount of effort, which makes it structurally faster for kicking. Shortening the radius of curvature in any kick, much like cracking a whip, creates greater acceleration, while lengthening the radius imparts greater angular momentum. The pelvis may be divided along three axes. The first, or x-axis, runs horizontally from one hip to the other. Torque, or the mass acceleration around an axis, is increased by thrusting the hip explosively forward. The second, or y-axis, runs vertically through the center of the pelvis. Rotating the hips quickly around this axis generates power. The torso remains fixed, the waist elastic and flexible. The third, or z-axis, runs centrally between both hips from stomach to back. Motion along this axis lends to the kick the added momentum of the reverse half of the body. Hip thrust must be well-timed with spring to be effective. The human body may be described as having an imaginary line running through its central core, which we call the gravitational axis or center line. This is the line upon which the rotational forces of the body rest in balance. Force directed toward but short of the center line will have little effect on an opponent's equilibrium and may be deflected by his body rotation. Aiming a strike beyond an opponent's center line becomes a push, which upsets his equilibrium but reduces your force considerably due to improper distancing. The most effective way of striking is to transfer your entire force directly into the center line itself. Along a man's center line, the force of gravity increases when approaching his area of support, in this case, the ground. The point at which all forces, especially the effect of gravity, act upon an object is called the center of gravity, or balance point. In a human being, the center of gravity is located along the center line a few inches below the navel. Striking toward the center line transfers force against the center of gravity. However, a shallow strike shifts it only slightly. A push moves it laterally with little distortion, but a perpendicular strike displaces it violently. Of the eight basic kicks, the front kick, although appearing simple, is very often performed incorrectly. The weapon utilized is the ball of the foot in the straight position. To kick properly, spring your knee up high. Thrust forward with the hip, extending the foot out straight. Keep your kick side shoulder back while leaning slightly forward at the waist to maintain balance. Do not kick targets beyond the angle of the raised knee or swing the leg up, causing undue pressure upon the knee joint. Notice the kicking foot springs up in an arc, reaching the back of the thigh just prior to hip thrust. Observe the whip-like quality of the entire motion, a characteristic of any proper kick. Against an opponent, kick perpendicularly into his center line. Kicking at any other angle will deflect the force of impact.
The round kick is thrown most effectively with the knee leveled at peak elevation, no later than 135 degrees into the kicking arc of curvature. The weapons used are either the ball of the foot in the side foot position or the instep. To execute the kick, spring the knee up 90 degrees into the kicking arc. Rotate the hip inward, bringing the foot around horizontally, then return along the same path. Always twist your torso in an opposite direction to your leg momentum. Rotating the hip down quickly on its y-axis upon impact relieves pressure on the knee. Note that the knee of the fixed leg is bent slightly and the ball of the grounded foot turns outward. The key to the round kick lies in holding the hip back where it joins the thigh while keeping the torso vertical. Here we see the kick thrown in the extreme to an opponent's head. Beginners should avoid kicking above chest height. Most high kicks are less powerful and more easily blocked. The secret of a proper side kick lies in the fluid change of direction in hip rotation from its Y to Z axis. The weapon used should be the back knife edge of the foot. Spring the knee and thigh up perpendicular to the line of strike. Rotate the hip on its Z axis, extending the foot heel out straight. Retract and down. A direct line is formed as you sight down your hip to your heel and out towards the target. Relax the leg muscles, allowing your bound and hip to do the work. The grounded foot should have pivoted 180 degrees, toes facing backward at the time of full extension, in compensation for the hip's lateral thrust. It's important to avoid leaning the torso back or facing it down during any kick, in that the force of gravity will reduce strike momentum. Side kicks are especially effective against all sections of the rib cage. Observe proper distancing. Don't allow your strike to become a push. To develop power in the hook kick, which is sometimes referred to as a reverse roundhouse, a great deal of coordination is required. The weapon in this kick is the back of the heel. Bound into a cocked side kick position. Thrust the foot out straight in advance of the target, then rotate the kick hip outward, bringing the foot into the round kick position. In this kick, the hip describes an S pattern. First rotating inward on its Y axis, then forward on its Z axis, and outward again on its Y axis. The heel with the greatest impact snaps into the target just after the hip returns on its Y axis. The hook kick, like the round kick, holds the hip tucked back at the joint. The further back, the shorter the arc and greater the speed. The further forward, the longer the arc and greater the momentum. In kicking this opponent, notice how the kick side shoulder leads the strike and is pulled back upon contact. This torso action helps in creating greater angular momentum. The inside crescent kick depends, more so than with the previous kicks, upon the powerful springing motion of the foot off the ground. The main weapon is the inside ankle although the arch may be used in blocking either arms or legs. Bounce your knee up high towards your side, then quickly rotate your hip both forward and inward. The foot will naturally snap up and across into the target. There exists a counterclockwise twist in the torso against the motion of the kick. Notice the sudden acceleration in the hip just before the strike and that the grounded foot doesn't move. A strong yet flexible waist is an asset due to the great forces being applied by both torso and hip in opposite directions. This kick should be used at close range and can be executed effectively at only one thigh length from an opponent. The 
the outside crescent kick is almost the reverse of the inside crescent kick, except that in this case, torso rotation assists the springing foot into position. The foot weapon utilized is the outside ankle. Spring the knee high across the torso, then rotate the hip outward. The kicking side shoulder jerks back rapidly just before the hip catches the motion. Each link in the chain of a kick is accelerated by the previous link, which is already moving around a highly accelerated fulcrum. Keep your kicking motion fluid, that is, your force must be applied evenly along all points in the motion. In kicking, every motion in the body should proceed as late as possible to take advantage of the acceleration of the preceding motion. At long distance, this kick is effective for blocking. At close distance, it's valuable for hitting to the head. The twist kick is complicated due to angular forces in the hip and leg traveling both perpendicularly and opposite to each other. Strike with the ball of the foot in a side foot position. As your knee springs up, your foot rotates in and upward while the hip pivots outwardly for the kick. What gives the motion its whip-like quality is the interaction of the angular momentums of both hip and foot, like two gears interlocked and rotating at 90 degrees to one another. Observe how opposite rotations in the hip swing the foot first inward, then upward into a strike, while keeping the foot's arc of curvature uniform. The torso, in the meantime, twists three times to lead the flow of motion. When striking in an arc parallel to the ground, this kick not only gets under an opponent's guard, but it's difficult to perceive as well. The hammer kick well lives up to its name, in that it is much like using an actual hammer. The weapon, in this case, is the back of the heel. The knee springs up across the torso, while the hip swings the foot up and down like a hammer. Thrown from an outside crescent kick position, the hip rotates first in on the y-axis, then up on the x-axis, out on the y-axis, and down on the x-axis. It's important to make full use of the power in the small of the back to drive the heel toward the ground. Notice that the last downward motion carries not only a shortened radius of curvature, but also the full force of gravity to give it acceleration. Against an opponent, the hammer kick is most effective for strikes to the top of the head, side of the neck, and the collarbone. Executing any kick 360 degrees about the hip's y-axis of rotation is called a spinning kick. The weapon used for the spinning front kick is once again the ball of the foot held in a straight foot position. Pivot 180 degrees on your front foot, twist your torso, then spring the knee up to front kick. The transition from a large angular force about the hip's y-axis to a perpendicular force about its x-axis makes this a difficult kick. Pulling back on the kick's opposite shoulder just prior to the strike helps in the transition. Observe how the fixed leg acts as a brake, retarding the spin just enough to allow for the forward kick motion. To remain accurate as well as create impact, a tremendous sense of timing and balance is required. It's important to sight the target 90 degrees into the spin, so your head must twist around slightly faster than your shoulder. Perhaps the most challenging of all spinning kicks is the spinning round kick. Either the ball of the foot in a side foot position or the instep are used as weapons. Spin your torso, pivoting on your rear foot, knee up, hip thrust, and the kick. 
To retain balance and speed, the knee should reach its peak height 240 degrees through the spin. During the last split second acceleration of the hip, pull your kick side shoulder back. Notice how the rear foot pivots first on the heel, then on its ball to face forward. This type of two-point pivot increases speed and controls momentum. Circular force becomes formidable due to the body spinning a full 360 degrees before contact. Throwing a spinning round kick from a position to either side of an opponent makes it perceptually faster to that opponent. The spinning side kick may be considered a prime example of the precise control of body momentum. The knife edge of the foot is the weapon used. Pivot 180 degrees on your front foot, spin springing the foot up, hip thrust and kick. Bound allows the hip in rotating from its Y to Z axis to accelerate faster than the spinning torso. Notice how the kick side shoulder pulls against the spin during thrust. Your kicking foot should pass in a straight line close to your fixed leg with the heel aimed towards the target. Always retain a vertical position during the spin, otherwise both your angular momentum and gravity will drive your torso downward. The foot must travel in a straight line to the target. By combining the large torque of its spin with thrust in the hip, the spinning hook kick carries the greatest power. The back of the heel is used in striking. Pivot on your forward foot, spin springing the rear foot into a high cock position, extend the leg, swing across and down. Thrust your hip out as in a side kick, just as your heel comes 12 inches away from its target. Keep your torso up and the kick leg parallel to the ground throughout the entire motion. Your foot should spring up slightly more distant from the fixed leg than in a spinning side kick. The key to power lies in the quick snapping action of the leg as the hip rotates from its Y to Zs and back. When kicking an opponent, crack the heel into the target immediately relaxing the leg after impact. Slightly easier to perform than the spinning round kick, the spinning inside crescent kick follows much the same principles. The weapon used is the inside ankle of the foot or the arch in blocking. Spin 240 degrees and execute an inside crescent kick. Your kick knee should reach its peak at the 240 degree mark and this kick must be performed quickly, otherwise the force of gravity will reduce the upward force of the bound. As in the spinning round kick, there must be a two-point pivot on the rear foot for speed and spin control. Try to keep both your knee and foot cocked in tightly during the spin for better balance. When your leg whips around the knee, it should lock straight, with the foot turned slightly in. The movements of the spinning outside crescent kick are the most natural of all spinning kicks. The outside ankle is utilized in striking. Pivot on your front foot, spring the knee up, spin and kick. As your torso twists rapidly, the hip catches up. Don't swing the knee across until the shoulder and hip have reached maximum acceleration. The greatest acceleration should be in the foot. Notice the uniformity of two simultaneous motions. The hip rotating on its y-axis and bound lifting the knee upward. Mechanical advantage is obtained by keeping the body vertical. Torque will be reduced by any imbalance. In 
terms of actual impact, angular momentum is never changed regardless of the distance of the foot from the body. The spinning twist kick is perhaps the most deceptive of all kicks in that the foot travels along the body in a spin. The weapon is the ball of the foot held in a side foot position. Pivot on the front foot, bound the knee up, rotate the hip out and kick. The hip must turn down slightly on its z-axis on the kicking side in order to bring the lower leg into position. Spinning faster will facilitate bringing the foot in and upward. Watch carefully the elastic restoring force in the muscles of the outer back of the thigh during leg extension. This gives the kick its speed. Visually, the spinning twist kick looks much like a rubber band unwinding. This particular kick is almost impossible to block due to its angle of entry plus the deflective force of the foot turning over. The added momentum of the spin makes this kick considerably more powerful than the basic hammer kick. The heel of the foot is used in striking. Pivot on the front foot. Spring the knee up. Spin and do a hammer kick. Good bound is essential to getting the foot up to its full height. A quick directional change in hip rotation, aided by the forces of gravity and muscle elasticity, accelerates the heel downward. Notice that the ground foot is 240 degrees through the pivot and perpendicular to the kicking foot just prior to the strike, a sign of good balance. Always hold the kicking leg straight throughout the downward motion. Never bend your knee. Kicking an opponent this way drives the force of impact right down to his feet. To the head it can be a killing blow. Proper footwork is the key factor in maintaining precise kicking distance. Notice how the feet are measured apart to establish maximum stability. This basic parallel stepping pattern is designed to help beginners develop a sense of balance when kicking over a distance. While stepping in a straight line, transfer two-thirds of your weight over the forward foot. Keep your forward knee bent and your rear leg held straight. In reverse, the process is the same. A more advanced stepping pattern is the fighting or L step. Both feet are placed perpendicular to one another, heels one and a half foot lengths apart. The forward foot pivots 90 degrees on the heel as the rear foot advances. This pattern's greatest advantage lies in its ability to facilitate quick changes of direction without having to cross the legs. With two-thirds of your weight over the rear foot and one-third over the forward foot, greater speed is lent to the forward leg and powerful spring to the rear. When advancing, weight shifted to the forward leg adds speed to the rear foot. In reverse, body momentum induces greater spring off the rear leg. Hip thrust should be timed precisely as the rear leg passes the forward leg, not sooner or later. Forward leg spring is enhanced greatly by bouncing the foot off the ground. In reverse, your weight shifts slightly forward for balance. Springing up in a circular motion adds power to the hip thrust. While bounding, concentrate on pivoting the kicking foot's heel out and upward simultaneously. In reverse kicking, weight is subtly shifted, first to the back leg, then to the front leg. The speed of the forward foot is increased by pivoting it around the knee. Power is generated by springing the knee first slightly to your side, then across.
Notice how the torso is kept erect throughout every motion. Don't overstep backward with the kicking foot or you'll lose both speed and balance. With the forward leg, spring the foot up towards your crotch, then thrust out. In reverse, avoid lifting the leg, focus on balance and circularity in the bound. For maximum momentum, spring your rear leg across the fixed leg so that the kicking foot's heel and the fixed foot's toe line up vertically just prior to hip thrust. Always bound off the forward leg so that as the knee crosses the torso, the lower leg rises parallel to its thigh. In order to kick more quickly, notice how the arm on the kicking side extends, acting as a lead-in just prior to the bound, then retracts as the hip begins its thrust. When kicking off the forward leg, arc the kicking knee slightly to the outside of your body, about midway through the bound, for greater power. Swinging too wide with a straight leg upsets balance and limits mobility. Therefore, pivot the kicking foot quickly around the knee after the strike. Don't lean back when kicking off the forward leg or the kick will go wild. Shift your weight slightly forward at the point of impact. To build up a whip-like action in the foot's momentum, you must bound the knee across the pivoting leg during the hip's inward rotation. In a forward leg kick, the key to getting the foot into a position parallel to the ground lies in the hip's rotational agility. The most common mistake in moving with this kick is to try and reach out with the kicking heel, which thereby reduces its effectiveness. Off the forward leg, make sure that your hammer blow falls absolutely vertical. At any other angle, stability suffers. To promote better balance when spinning, be sure to pass the kicking foot from a shallow bound close to the fixed leg. Bounding too high too quickly will offset your torso backwards. When stepping fast with any spinning kick, try to step into the pivot. During retreat, this becomes much more difficult. Notice carefully the difference in tempo between advancing and retreating. The extra change in the direction of your body's momentum will retard your retreat. When advancing, this kick may be thrown off the rear leg, although very rarely over a full 360 degrees. However, retreating definitely requires the kick to be executed by the forward leg. Kicking off the rear leg is in most cases intrinsically slower than kicking off the forward leg. To advance more quickly, cross your rear leg behind the forward leg, then kick off the forward leg using the rear leg as a pivot. 
To retreat faster, hop back with the rear leg just as the forward leg lands, then kick with your forward leg. During an advance, be sure to snap your kicking foot back to your hip after striking and before setting it down on the ground. When kicking into a retreat, the striking foot replaces the position of the fixed foot, which in turn pops back for balance. Sidestepping an opponent improves the perceptual efficiency of an advance. The hop-step retreating motion forms an excellent feint if performed in two separate directions. To increase speed, place the heel of your forward foot so it points towards the target when you step. In retreating, first step back with your forward foot before using it to kick. Impact is multiplied both in advancing due to the kicker's added stepping momentum and in retreating due to the opponent's attack momentum. To be accurate with this kick, sight the target just as the forward foot leaves the ground. The torso must twist extensively. Note here once again the cross behind step used in the spinning round kick. The bound, whether during advancing or retreating, should be performed almost vertically and close to the body. While requiring only the forward foot to pivot, a flexible waist will allow one to spin the shoulders around 180 degrees and discern the target. Keeping the kicking leg straight after striking creates a lateral body shift which can be useful in sidestepping an opponent. When first moving with the spinning twist kick, remember, once you're out of balance, the force of the blow will throw your torso in the opposite direction. Try to relax, thereby reducing any extraneous forces on your body as you walk through the motions. Mechanical energy, or the sum of both potential and kinetic energies, can be increased in this kick by raising the leg higher and drawing the hip back faster prior to impact. Should you miss the target with this kick, don't come down heavily on the ground with your heel. Land on your toes and on the ball of your foot. The advantage of the sliding step lies in its ability to shift one's centre of gravity uniformly over both greater and lesser distances than the fighting step while maintaining balance. Executed from an L stance, the rear foot's heel glides up to the forward foot's heel and vice versa in retreating. This type of footwork permits quick controlled movement in any direction. For greater stability while sliding, keep the knees bent and the torso vertical. In order to compensate for advancing or retreating momentum, Always keep your weight slightly over the leg furthest from your direction of motion. Try kicking just as your feet come together for greater speed.
Utilizing the momentum of the sliding rear leg, which carries two thirds of your body weight, the forward foot's bound acceleration is multiplied. Notice that the forward heel touches first in advancing and last in retreating. Bound may be aided further by keeping the forward foot's heel off the ground, then simultaneously dropping it as the rear foot springs. When kicking off the forward leg, reverse the above process so that the rear foot's heel drops as the forward foot bounds. Lower your center of gravity by first lifting, then dropping at strike impact, the pivoting foot's heel. This increases the force of the blow. The same principle applies to kicking off the forward leg. Raising the rear foot heel promotes mobility, while dropping it develops a good base for force transference. From the rear leg, you should have an uplifting feeling as the rear foot passes in front of the fixed leg. The fixed leg knee will straighten briefly upon impact. To kick quickly from a slide, the forward foot's heel should never touch the ground. The rear leg must lend more assistance to the advance or retreat. Knee action plays an important role in sliding kicks. They act as springs which absorb the shock of motion and promote rebound, which is an asset to kicking fast. Dropping the fixed leg knee slightly and at the moment of impact also helps lower your center of gravity. To further reduce rebound pressure on the knee, tilt the foot slightly to the outside and strike in a faint downward motion. Be sure to lock the knee for a microsecond upon foot impact to allow total force transference. Because the sliding twist kick combines so many forces moving in various directions, it is necessary to be sure-footed. Don't allow your center of gravity to shift further back over your fixed leg as a result of advancing or retreating motions. Avoid long slides with this kick, in that while advancing you won't be able to get kicking height and while retreating you may fall backward. The hammer kick thrown from an outside crescent kick position is much easier to control when moving quickly due to less hip rotation. The forward sliding motion actually assists in controlling the accuracy of this kick. Watch closely the footwork involved and remember to kick fast, pivot on the ball of the foot, not heel. During retreat, try not to extend your hip forward while spinning. Here we see again the retreating footwork. This pattern is visually slow to a facing opponent and therefore must be used for angling attacks. Retreating is somewhat easier because the body undergoes only one change in direction.
Having the feet further apart in a slide ensures balance, but cuts down on speed. To compensate for the opposing directional forces in this kick, keep your torso weight over the pivoting foot. A very powerful kick due to the large linear momentums combined. Note how the rear leg acting as a brake aids its own rebound. To increase speed, spin your body at the same time that your rear foot slides forward. An extremely difficult kick, so you must touch your toe halfway through the spin to get enough bound. Bending both legs at the knees before springing the leg up adds power to this kick. Slashing the leg straight across will also allow you to hit an opponent moving in your direction of motion. Angular by nature, this kick is greatly improved by a slide's versatility in direction and distance. The center of gravity's uniform motion in sliding reduces extra weight shifts which impede this kick. Due to its tremendous kinetic and potential energies, this kick is a finishing blow to the unwary. Retreat momentum adds greater control and power to the strike by throwing the hip back. Skipping permits you to move and kick so quickly that you can only catch up with your center of gravity upon impact. It also allows you to strike an opponent over great distances and before he can prepare a proper defense. To skip, shift your weight forward, bring up the rear foot, then kick. To be most effective, all strikes must be dealt simultaneously with the rear foots hitting the ground. When advancing, skip off the rear leg, then kick as the forward foot lands. Thrusting with an extended hip increases your power. Notice the scissor-like leg motion when springing off the rear leg. Here we see a close-up of both advancing and retreating skips. Notice that the skip, as well as the kick, is off the forward leg. Structurally, forward leg kicks are fastest. Skipping too high reduces speed due to the extra distance traveled. Don't forget to circle with the foot in skipping as well. With proper angling, this is one of the deadliest kicks in combat. Always spring back and to the side of an opponent when using this kick. Remember to kick straight and level with your foot. You must skip back off the forward leg while retreating. With the skeletal structure adding support, this kick creates high impact. After switching legs, pull the kick side shoulder back. Always spring the knee up high into this kick.
start thrusting your hip at the height of your skip. Without ground to aid two-fold hip rotation, this kick may only be performed off the forward leg. Lean your torso slightly forward to increase strike force. Bound your knee outward when starting the skip. The scissor-like leg motion here will aid your kick momentum. Rotate your hip first outward when beginning the skip. This kick requires high hip speed and strong bound to be effective. Like the hook kick, only the forward leg can be used when skipping. All hip rotation should start while off the ground and end upon impact. Thrown from a skip, the twist kick's deceptiveness is multiplied. Here, speed, strong bound and excellent coordination are mandatory. For the sake of speed and balance, it's better to throw this kick off the forward leg. However, as seen here, the rear leg is not an impossibility. Make sure your knee first bounds outward before the strike. Here the bound is off the forward leg, while the kick comes off the rear leg. Another but slower type of spinning skip bounds outward, then kicks off the forward leg. Both bounding and striking off the rear leg is quickest. This type of spinning skip is necessary when retreating. Here we see it again in slow motion. Bound inward off the forward leg, spin and kick. Notice that the forward foot pivots into the spin. Here we see an odd variation of a skip being executed halfway through the spin. The proper way to retreat is seen here. Notice the bound comes off the forward foot while the kick comes off the rear. Here we see both bound and kick progressing off the rear foot. Once again, bound should come off the rear foot when retreating. Bounding off the forward foot increases speed and distance. To control direction, bound off the rear leg. While retreating, a rear leg bound increases both speed and distance. This kick has very natural momentum and great power, bound inward off the forward leg. Pivot back on the rear foot prior to the spin, skip backward and kick. Pivot the forward foot's heel out before skipping. To gain kick time, leap far off the rear leg. 
Remember, strike impact happens simultaneously with the opposite foots touching the ground. For better control and power in this kick, bound off the rear leg. An angled retreat makes this kick treacherous. Both bounding and kicking off the forward foot is slower, but the power is tremendously increased. A skipping hammer off the rear leg in retreat should only be used at close range. Jumping alternate deep knee bends develop the leg strength necessary for jumping kicks. Keep the torso vertical for balance and don't overdo it. Jumping kicks should be used only if you lose balance in combat, if there's no time to get into a proper strike position or if an opening appears in an opponent's defense. Your legs should exchange position in mid-air during practice to help you understand how to maintain balance while airborne. Always twist your hip at the height of a jump, never during ascent or descent. Power generated at the height of a jump is greatest. Twist your hip quickly in order to bring your shoulders around 180 degrees. Scissor-like leg action lends great momentum to a rear leg kick. Notice how the strike is executed at the height of a jump. Your torso should always lean slightly forward when kicking. Observe how weight is shifted to the leg closest to the direction of the jump. The legs should not cross in a forward leg kick. Always bring the non-kicking foot up next to the buttocks for speed. Remember to kick perpendicular to the target. Bound in front jumping kicks is always circular. The striking foot must kick from a high cocked position and the kicking leg should arc across parallel to the ground. Keep your torso vertical even when your jump momentum is backward. Pull your kick side shoulder back as you kick and bound more off the forward foot when kicking with the forward leg. Note the very quick circular motion in the kicking foot. Tuck both feet up as though sitting on one leg when jumping and keep your kick side shoulder pulled back with your torso leaning into the strike. Rear leg kicks are useful when an opponent presses in too fast. Jumping kicks are most powerful in that force is not transmitted into the ground. It all goes into the strike. However, kicks in mid-air always lack stability. Rotate your hips slightly inward on its x-axis half into the jump. Jumping kicks prove to be the best for long distance attack. The kicking leg must retract quickly after the strike. The non 
kicking leg left dangling compensates for the other leg's upward momentum. Pull your opposite shoulder across to balance the kick's crossing momentum. In order to get height in the kick leg, bound stronger off the kicking foot. Don't follow too far across with the kicking leg or you'll begin to lose balance. Caution while executing this kick, don't lean back. The knee in a high cross position is facing outward at the height of the jump. Your kick side hip faces forward and your shoulders pulled back before striking. Always land on your rear foot after kicking. Quick hip rotation combined with strong forward foot bound is the key to getting the leg into position for this kick. Remember, kick parallel to the ground. Lean your torso far forward to maintain balance. Arch in with the small of your back on the kick side to gain power and speed. Point the opposite knee back to catch your backward momentum. Spring mostly off your forward leg and tuck both knees up high. Pull the kick shoulder slightly in to help break the spin. Like skipping, bound more off the rear leg in a retreat. Pull your opposite shoulder across to add force to the kick. Hold the kicking hip back in the spin and keep it there for the strike. First bound off the forward foot, spin, then bound off the rear leg. Always bound your striking foot up level with the knee. A forward pull in the kick shoulder breaks the spin. Then a backward pull drives home the strike. When the hip thrusts, the opposite knee extends back for power. Due to its great angular momentum, this is the most powerful kick. Most important, keep your kick side shoulder back and torso vertical. Always kick level to the ground for added momentum. Always try to center your weight in any jumping kick. Drop the opposite leg and pull the opposite shoulder across at impact. When retreating, extend the opposite leg in the direction of retreat. In any kick, always sight your target with the knee, not the foot. Dropping the kick side knee down from an elevated position adds weight to this kick. Swinging the arms in opposite arcs prior to the jump lends speed to the spin. Relax and keep the knees up when performing this jumping kick. For an opponent, 
determining the speed, direction and intended target of kicks thrown at high level is most difficult. Kick force is best transferred when the striking foot absorbs the least. Accuracy may only be controlled by breaking the spin with the torso. The potential energy is greatest in this jumping kick due to both the body and foot's elevated positions. Remember, always keep sight of your target. Understanding the eight basic kicks, how to spin, move and generate power with them prepares you for the next stage, the strategical arrangement of kicking techniques for use in actual combat. The following are only a few of the many possible combinations. Use the outside crescent kick's momentum to bound off the ground and kick again. After a front kick, step to the side with a spinning twist kick. The trick in this case is to use the opponent's kick force to bound your hook kick to his head. Here we see an excellent example of proper angling in a kick attack. Cross-step behind, spin away, and round kick. Then cross-step in front, spin, and hook kick. After sliding out of range, use your hook kick's momentum to spin into a round kick. Side kicking the forward knee stops in advance long enough to use other techniques. Use your kicks to make openings for strikes to key areas of the body and for finishing blows. In a close encounter, remember, you still have another foot which can break you free to kick again. Learn how to duck into a spinning kick as well as set your opponent up for a strike. All jumping combinations use the retract momentum of one kick as bound for the next. Jumping kicks may be used as quick evasive attacks against a tackle, for instance. Use the resistant force of an opponent's body to continue an attack, even in mid-air. Ah! 
Much like a jackhammer, one kick breaks the opponent's balance while the others drive their force through. The most highly advanced jumping kicks allow you to both block and strike the opponent in one motion. Ultimate power in kicking is not found in the actual techniques themselves, but in the mind, where, in a split second of clarity, time ceases to exist, and all is stillness, as though in the eye of a storm.